Hey, so uh, we are going to do something a little bit different today. And instead of just working with uh, physical input and output, we're going to work instead with web data as a way to uh, update things on our microcontroller. Before we do that, I'm just going to talk a little bit about what APIs are uh, and how you can use this with a P5 sketch. Uh, so this first example won't actually be using the microcontroller at all. I'll save that for the ne for the next video. So um, an API is an application programming interface, and it's something that you'll find often in different uh, programming environments or languages where you'll have hooks into, say, the operating system or something like that uh, that'll give you the ability to, like, say, open up. Uh, a, a video stream or get into like the audio processes of your computer. But there's also web APIs where people are providing lots and lots of data. Uh, and this could be data that's collected from sensor networks, or it could be something that's generated like say like the stock market, or, you know, it could be weather. Um, you know, it's, there's all sorts of different things. Uh, and there's a great many places where you can go out and find APIs. Some are updated really frequently. Some are updated like once a month. Some are updated only once ever. It all sort of depends. And so if you're kind of curious about what sort of APIs are out there, there's a, a few places that you can look. There's this um, uh, GitHub here for public APIs. Um, it's a collective list of, as it says, free APIs for use in software and web development. Um, it has its own API as well. Uh, you know, one that I particularly like um, is New York City has uh, open data. Uh, so this is, these are places where you can get information on like how many recycling bins there are in New York City or what the census was, uh, how many people live in each borough in say like in 2010, the last time the census happened. Uh, so these are just places where you can go and request information and a web service will return it for you. Now we're going to use, um, in this particular example, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down uh, values that are about the air quality index. So how, uh, how dirty is the air and around me? Um, so uh, AQI is uh, something that's measured uh, in parts per million. Um, so like how the, the, that's like the particulate that's really bad for your lungs. Um, how many parts per million, I, maybe million or possibly billion there are in the air. Um, but uh, the AQI right here, you can see this is um, from a website called airnow.gov. They have an API that uh, I found to be a little bit finicky. Um, so I'm just using them as a reference for uh, this color and this range right here. So you can see these the various AQI values. The lower it is, the better the air is for you. The higher it is, the, the, the more hazard it is. And so here you can see it goes from good to moderate, unhealthy for sensitive groups, unhealthy, very unhealthy, and hazardous. Uh, and you'll get a value somewhere, it's a digit, somewhere between... Um, zero and you know it'll go past 500 it's just um you know that's not part of the scale because if it's past 500 then you, you, the air is just poison essentially um so uh what i'm going to do is i'm going to pull down uh data from a website that tracks the air quality uh in and then i'll show you how to parse that information and just display it in a p5 sketch in the next video i'll show you how you can take that bit, that data and then like send it to your Arduino. So uh, some APIs, not all of them, require for you to register uh, and get a, um, a key or access token. Uh, this, um, this particular site that I'm using, it's called IQ Air. Uh, they ask you to register, but then you can get, I think it's like 10,000 uh, free queries a month. Um, so that's probably plenty for what we're doing. Uh, and so um, you'll see I've got this key that is generated for me right here. And a lot of times you'll need this to access the data. So when you make your HTTP request uh, to load the data, you'll have to include this somewhere inside of there. Now, most of these have um, some documentation that tell you about the API 
how you would, would construct a request for it, and then what kind of information would come back to you. So uh, you can see here, this, is, for example, is like uh, what a response might look like. Um, we'll take a look at one, an actual one in, in a little bit. The format here is something called JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. Uh, it's something that's built specifically for the web and for JavaScript. Uh, it's very easy to parse through. So we'll take a look at how we can drill down and just get the information that we want out of, out of this. Uh, so here, um, this is basically how a, an API request is constructed um, in, in this particular uh, with this particular service. You can see here, it'll say uh, the, let me zoom in here for you. So it says uh, the URL would be api.airvisual.com slash v2 slash countries question mark key equals and then your API key, that value that I had just on this other screen here. And so this would give me a list of all the different supported countries for their services. So we can try this just as an example. So I'm just gonna copy this open up a new browser window. So, and then I'm gonna take my API key right here. Uh, and I'm just gonna paste that there, hit enter, and I get this big long list of stuff, right? So um, this is how uh, in, in Chrome, when a JSON uh, gets returned, it just lists it out as text like this. Uh, there are tools for formatting it. There's a, um, and I just wanted to show you all what it looks like without being formatted. So if you saw this, you wouldn't freak out. Um, a, a formatted, this formatted uh, request would look like this, right? So I'm using a, a plugin in Chrome here called JSON Formatter. Um, it'll show you both the raw and then also parsed, right? And so by parsed, it sort of breaks it out into something that's slightly more human readable. But here you can see, these are all the different countries that this particular service supports, right? So um, this can be useful for, uh, for figuring out other aspects of their API and what it will support. So here we could see, um, if you wanted to get a list of supported states in a country, you could format something like this. Um, but, or if you wanted to get like the nearest city data, so it would geolocate you. Um, you could use GPS coordinates and get information from that, or you could get stuff specified by a particular city, right? So this one right here will pull down the AQI information for Los Angeles in California. So I'm actually gonna use this quickly. In my example, I'm gonna use um, New York City, but this works for here. So here is the response in JSON. We can see that it includes a status, um, so successful, uh, and then the data inside of here, so the city, Los Angeles, and we can see that's up here in the URL, the state, also in the URL that I asked for, and then the country, USA. So these three things I asked for along with my key, these are the key value pairs, that's what they're called, that I sent along in my request, and this is what got returned to me. So it gives me some other information here, so like, the specific geo coordinates of the uh, latitude and longitude of the center of Los Angeles. Uh, and then they'll give me some other information here too. So the current weather, uh, this is the timestamp at which it was requested, that most recently has this information, um, the temperature in, in, in Celsius, barometric pressure, the relative humidity, wind speed, the wind direction. Uh, so, you know, the, all this sort of information too, I, I know that, that TSTP, PR, HU, et cetera, that what these stand for because I looked through the API documents and gave that back to me. So what I'm interested in is the air quality or the amount of pollution. And so we can see right here, uh, there's this other field called pollution. It's got a timestamp and then it's got these things here too, AQI US and AQI CN. So United States and China, uh, because they can't seem to agree on most anything, have their own ways of measuring air quality. And so the AQI US uh, value is 18. The AQI in, in the Chinese value is 16. We're going to go, uh, since I'm in the States, I'm going to go with the US version. So um, in this case, we could pull off the number 18 and reuse that somewhere inside of a processing sketch. So 
I've got uh, an example here uh, that takes uh, API data and then uh, writes on my window over here inside of the canvas. What it'll do is it'll change the background color to uh, match up to this AQI table that I showed you earlier, and then it'll list what the current AQI is in New York City. So I'm going to walk you through this example. Uh, I'll run it right now just so you can see what happens because there's some things that it prints out for you. Uh, so here, if I run this, we'll see it loads and then it says the NYC AQI is 30. So that's a nice bright green color there. Uh, so I'll show you exactly what's going on. I've got some variables here. The first one is uh, something that's going to hold the entire returned API response. So it's going to hold all the JSON data. I've got two variables here, one for the background color and one for the text color. And then I've got another variable that's going to hold the actual AQI like value. So um, in here, I've got this function called preload. Preload is a little bit different than what you normally would see in most P5 sketches. Uh, it is something that gets called before setup. So this is useful if you're doing things like loading uh, data from an external website or videos or images or sound. It's something that happens before anything else in the sketch tries to run or load, and it waits until all that information is downloaded. Uh, so this way you make sure that you have all your external files ready to go before the rest of the sketch starts. So here I'm saying uh, I've got a, a variable that holds the URL, so I could just swap that out if I wanted to change anything about it. Uh, and then I'm loading that into the API data variable. I'm using this function called load, load JSON, and it just takes one argument, that's the URL. Now, you can have other arguments in there, depending on what you're doing. Um, we might take a look at those uh, in a subsequent video, but for here, it works uh, pretty, it works well. So this downloads that file that we looked at, it downloads this, um, except in this case, you can see I'm looking at New York City uh, instead of Los Angeles, and it, loads this and then it stores this into the API data variable. And down inside of my setup, you can see I'm actually, I'm printing that out right here. So this finishes loading everything and then the setup will run afterwards. And we can see down in the console, it's printed out this thing right here where it says object status success and then data is another object, right? And so I can drill down here and this sort of hierarchy shows you how JSON is formatted. There's this top level object, and then there's something inside of here called data, right? And so this object right here is actually the API data. And then inside of that, I've got something data that reports back the city, the state, the country, the location, right? But I'm not interested in the location. I'm listed in the current information. I'm interested in the current pollution. You can see right here, this is the value that I'm looking for. So in order to get down here, we need to parse through multiple levels of the, of the, of the response. So here I've got a variable called AQ, AQI, and you can see how I drill down inside of there. So I'm saying AQI equals API data, right, this whole object, and then I'm saying data right here, right? And then I say current, which is this right here, and then pollution right here, and then finally uh, AQI US, right? And so this right here, you can see it's this pollution level, API data, data current, do, 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 right? So I can actually just replace this here with API, or AQI, sorry. Uh, and so now I, I, I'm printing this out right here, just the pollution level, right? There we go. Now I've got something that'll uh, that'll that'll take that information and print it out, and I can reuse it wherever I want. So here I'm taking the AQI variable, and I'm just using uh, an if statement to parse out what I want to do for both the background color and the text color. So if it's less than fifty, less than or equal to fifty, which it is right now, then the background color is green and the text color is black. Let's say it was uh, you know significantly higher if the AQI was say like one seventy five which is uh, a 
a pretty grody number to think about. The background color is a solid red, and then the text color is white. So it's just basically this is a way for me to update every time I run the sketch. I can see instantly and get some visual feedback as well as some, uh, you know, qual you know, qualitative information about, um, you know, the uh, qualitative and quantitative information about about the data. And then in the drawing, just like going through and I'm saying like, here's the background color, text size, and then I'm saying text NYCAQI, and I'm just printing that out in the center of the screen right here. So this is uh, a real simple sort of example. You know, weather is a real popular thing. Um, you know, natural phenomenon is, is always like a, a good one for people to look at, uh, you know, and so um, there's also, uh, you know, there's ones that are like based off of celestial events. So how many people are in space? Where's the International Space Station over the uh, over the Earth right now? So there's a whole bunch of different kinds of like things you can get from APIs. Uh, but what we'll do in the next video is we'll take this information and I'll show you how you can send this color value back to your microcontroller so you could say, for example, light up that NeoPixel strip.